Welcome to the Vacation Races and Friends podcast. A podcast about events, travel, and the people who love both. Find more episodes at vacationraces.com. Welcome back to the Vacation Races and Friends podcast. I'm Colleen, the race announcer for Vacation Races. Excited to be here with you. I got Dane Craig in studio. We're going to talk Yellowstone Half Marathon, go through this race guide, get you all ready, all pumped for this race weekend. We are excited. West Yellowstone, it's hard to believe that it's been like two years since we've been there. We were there last year. That's right. You had your we, small group. Yeah, we did a small group race there That's in That's right. I forgot. July? Over there August. in the Rendezvous uh, trails over there. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. That was that's a good trail system over there. We actually visited West Yellowstone last year just on a family vacation because we figured there were no tour bus in Yellowstone. Well, so we might as well take advantage of it. And so we actually went up there. But it's good to have everybody back for the Yellowstone half. Yeah, it's good gonna be good to be back. We How- weren't there the year before. Yeah. That's- so it actually has it's been it's been a while since it's we've been done a this race. While. We took a year off in 2019. We were trying a thing where we were gonna alternate. Teton. Teton and Yellowstone, yep. and then decided we didn't want to do that and brought them both back in 2020, but then had to cancel them. So it's been it's been over two years since we've been wow. and held this race in, in West Yellowstone. Wow, that's crazy. But we're back, baby. We are back, and it is going to be good. West Yellowstone, Yellowstone National Park, um, America's very first national park. Actually, it was the world's first national park. Did you know that? USA. The world's first. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of great. So... We're going to be there, but we're going to talk about all these details. We've got a 5K and we have a half and we have tons of people who joined us for Grand Teton who are going to be joining us for Yellowstone. Yeah, we sure do. Doing about, some of these doubles and quads and. Yeah. Yeah. We've got close to, I want to say 800, almost 900 that'll be wow. doing both Grand Teton and uh, Yellowstone. That's amazing. Either in the double or the quad. Yeah. Wow, that's great. So uh, if you're interested in that, is there any more? Can you upgrade to something if you were at nope. Teton? All right. No, unfortunately. All well, sold you, out. Yeah. If you were at Teton okay. and wanted to uh, come over to come Yellowstone, over Yellowstone okay. we, we could accommodate that. Unfortunately, Teton is full, sold out. Yeah, that one's sold out. So it's going to be good. And we're excited about it. West Yellowstone, this course is very unique. I That's one thing that I like about this course is it's very unique. I'm a trail runner, though. So it's it's something that's really interesting to me. So we're going to kind of talk through those details and uh, get you all set up to have a great race weekend. So to start off with, West Yellowstone, little teeny tiny West Yellowstone, right? Yeah. They get 100 inches of snow every single year. Is that true? Yeah, it is true. Yeah. I mean, they just... Yeah, there's a lot of snowmobiling and snowshoeing yes. and snow skiing and cross-country skiing. Actually, on my bucket list is to go to West Yellowstone and visit Yellowstone in the winter. Because it's open. You can get over to the Old Faithful Lodge. They actually have a, oh, a yeah. the winter lodge that's open over there. Yeah. I was in court one time you up went? in West Yellowstone, which is a story for another time why I was there. Wow. But there was the guy in, before me uh, was actually there because he had been cited for snow snowmobiling into the park ah without prior permit or yeah. anything like he that went in some back way and yeah. was ripping around in there and they were like uh you can't do that interesting it is on my bucket list though because they have these you'll if you walk around west yellowstone it's not very big pretty easy to walk around you'll see the snow cats and everything that oh, are yeah. just kind of parked because it is they get a lot of snow but they use it for tourism in the park and yeah. there's it would be a totally different experience to see Yellowstone in the snow. Yeah, it'd be amazing. I it think it'd be really cool, be. especially to see the bison. Yes. And uh, all the thermal features, because the snow would yeah. not stick to these thermal features. Or well, the steam coming off of them would oh, be like yeah. so much more thick and vivid. Yeah. So cool. If you've not been to Yellowstone, you're definitely in for a treat. Yellowstone is ginormous, almost overwhelming to me yes. a little bit. Some things you need to know about Yellowstone, a lot of construction going on. Mount yeah. Washburn is closed. Yep. Tower Junction has a whole bunch of construction going on. So Yeah, just, lots to know before you go. Yeah. You, you could really waste a lot of time in, in Yellowstone if you're not careful, yeah. if you don't plan ahead. Yeah, have a, have a plan. Yellowstone's kind of, it's kind of a figure eight. Like there's yes. kind of four quadrants. It's like a snowman. Park. It looks like a yeah. snowman. Yeah. And so, and so and there's wonderful things to do in all of those areas. But it can take time to get from West Yellowstone to some of those other areas. And then you get bison crossing the road and you get stuck in traffic or oh, construction. Yeah. Or so, a bear jam. Or yeah. Like. So so plan ahead to make sure you really yeah. 
maximize your time there. Do some checking around, especially if you're planning to drive in with the construction, because even last year when we were there, there was significant construction mm. that was going on. Um, even some of the Geyser Basin parking lots were under construction. And I know down by Old Faithful, they're redoing one of the bridges, the flyover bridges down mm. there by Old Faithful. So some of that could cause some some traffic delays and they can only do this construction in the summertime because they don't have right. any time in the winter to do it. So they have to do it when we're there visiting, but it's still a great place. You're going to see some amazing things, but first we got to get you through the race. What's fueling your race is nature powering your run. Nature's sunshine puts the power of nature into your hands with world-class herbs and supplements, protein powders, and active nutrition formulas designed to keep you healthy for the long haul. With nearly 50 years of expertise and an impeccable reputation for excellence in the natural health industry, we're proud to partner with Vacation Races to offer you 15% off your order. Just use promo code NSPVR at checkout. That's NSPVR. SPVR. Live better, climb higher, dream bigger, dig deeper, and power your game with the power of nature at naturesunshine.com. Friday, we all need to get there. Pick up bibs. We got a 5K that day. Let's walk through how Friday's going to work. What time's our bib pickup start? So, bib pickup's going to start at 9 a.m. Okay. So, bright and early. Um, we do suggest that you go at off times. Everybody loves to crowd it like right at the first. Yeah. Everybody wants to get there right when it opens to get it done with. Um, a lot of people want to get it and then go into the park or they do the opposite, right? They go into the park and they're like, I'll catch it at the end of the day. So our busiest hours are from about nine to 11, right when we open and then three to five, right about when we're, when we're winding down. So if you want to avoid any long waits or any any backups um try and come in the middle of the day you know yeah. get an early lunch and then come or take a late lunch and come early or or whatever but yeah. try and hit those you know between 11 and 3 is when it's a little slower and especially if you're doing the 5k don't expect to roll up at five o'clock and not have traffic and a little bit of anxiety trying to get your yeah because everybody else is going to want to yeah. do the same thing yeah. yeah so so kind of spread that out so we get a couple options with this bib pickup we've been doing drive through bib pickups for over a year now yeah a year yeah, because Bryce Canyon Ultra Bryce was, was the, first, the yeah. first time that we did that. And so we've got a drive through method that we're going to be doing, but also a walk up method. So walk us through those, how those are going to work, how we're going to drive in and, and what we can expect. Yeah, so the the start and finish of the half and the 5K, as well as bid pickup, are all off of Old Airport Road, which is this big open field just across Iris Street um, on the west edge of town. West Yellowstone is so small, guys. Yeah. You are going to find this place. <laughs> if you're coming if you're coming from Idaho. Yeah, from Idaho from uh, Island, Island Park. Park. Yep. As you approach town, it's this big empty field on your yep. right right before you can't get miss down. it. So, so you'll see it. Um, but we're offering drive-through and and walk-up okay. pick up. And so the drive-through is something that we adopted as as part of uh, our efforts to be COVID compliant and get events approved. Obviously, a bid pickup and an expo is is a point of congregation, and the concern during this pandemic has been large groups gathering. And so, eliminating that expo and having drive through bid pickup is one of the ways that that we kind of uh, avoided that. So we are offering that. We're still offering that at this event, but we're also going to walk offer walk up um, to try and alleviate when things get a little backed up. The sure. Drive through. So there's another yeah. option. Yeah. So drive through works just like a drive through to fast food restaurant or something would, right? You'd pull up and They'll look up your your name. Um, we'll email you out a QR code that they'll scan, which will make it look up really, really fast. Or just tell them your name, and they'll be able to look you up. So look up you and get your registration information. They'll look up your bib number and get you your race shirt and your hydro pouch. And if you're doing um, our bison double, then they'll also get you your extra swag item. So okay. you pull up through the drive through You know, you get in the, the queue, work your way through the queue, place your order. They'll bring your... Order Place to your window. Order. You're not getting Chick Fil A, okay? Yeah. You're not gonna get Chick Fil A out of this, right? You're getting a silicone hydro pouch. Yes, yeah. is not as good as it sounds. It's not as good as it sounds. We don't recommend eating it, even with Chick Fil A sauce. Which, by the way, oh, I would, yeah, I'd eat it with Chick Fil A sauce. Apparently, there is a shortage of Chick Fil A sauce. I'm just putting it out Great. there. First I'm, gasoline in the east, and now Chick Fil A. Now sauce. it's Chick Fil A sauce. So if you have the opportunity, apparently though they're only giving one container out per bag. What? I know. I know. I know. Anyway, I digress. This isn't about Chick Fil A. 
drive through bit. I know I've thrown you I off. I can't focus. You can't focus so, anymore. All uh, you're thinking about is Chick Fil A yeah. sauce. So drive, so drive through pickup. That's one option. So you get your your packet, and then you go ahead and park if you'd like to. And uh, we'll have merchandise and some Great. limited vendors there that you can go and and shop around if you'd like, or you can just. <laughs> Pick up your your packet and then Head on and get out. out of there. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be great. Then the second option is walk up. Yeah, and so uh, similarly, you'll, the same location, but instead of entering the drive through queue, you'll just go park your car, and you can walk up to the bib pickup tent and get your bib that way. What so. I love about this event is the simplicity of this event. No shuttles. The start and finish line is right here where this bib pickup is. Yeah. I mean, once you find that, you're Ma- you're parking golden. in a massive field. It, like, it's, it's yeah, just, yeah. Logistics it's, are. Very easy simple for us, which are, makes it really easy for the runner. They, yeah, it's really clear what to do. So yeah, so this one is really going to be straightforward for you. You mentioned about COVID policies and, and compliance and things like that. Talk a little more through that, Dane. As far as what is the mask requirements, if there are any, what what are we expecting? You know, as far as that from our runners. Sure. So just to pull the curtain back a little bit. Um, it's kind of a transition period for us. It feels similar to May of 2020 when nobody knew what was going on yeah. and or what to do. Yeah, or what to do or how to operate with new rules and restrictions and things. But it's the opposite, right? Like restrictions are being lifted uh, some places faster than others. And as we do races state to state and county to county and, and things are different everywhere, um, we're trying to be deliberate about our decisions. We want to we want to put on races that are safe and compliant and make people feel comfortable. Um, so we're not really we're going to err on the side of caution. We're not ripping off that band aid right away to just be like, hey, everything's back to normal. So so we are encouraging face coverings um, when you're in close proximity to others. So like in the start line queue when you're near other people. Okay. It's but you don't have to run with it on. Right. You wouldn't have to run with it on um, or anything like that. And, you know, in social distancing, we'd encourage again. But, you know, people, there's people vaccinated, there's people unvaccinated, the different comfort levels and things like that. So just just be aware of each other and yeah. be courteous. And so we're kind of trying to follow, maybe even erring on the side of caution a little bit more than than we need to. But we're, we're just easing through this transition, navigating it the best we can. I think you, know, you also said before, um, you know, when we've been talking before, about the communities that we visit. I mean, we do have a responsibility yeah. to the communities as well. We're we're bringing a lot of people from different places, right? And and, and we want to we be, want to be good neighbors. Yeah. We want to show them that we appreciate them hosting us and that we're, you know, we're sensitive to to their possible concerns. And as event organizers, it's important to us too because our relationships with these communities are are important. That's what our events are yeah. based off of. And uh, and so part of the way that we nurture those relationships is is not just bullying in and, and doing things however we want to do them. You know, we're, so we're, we're uh, again, being a little cautious, both for our runners and also for the communities that we're doing these events. So, so face masks, face coverings, things like that are encouraged when you're in close proximity to others, not necessary while you're running. Um, Aid stations, you're going to see hands-free operations yeah. of our jugs and things like that. So, yep, so a no-touch a, system. Yeah, you'll step on a foot pedal and it'll dispense liquid so that you don't have to put your hands on it. Which honestly, I've seen where you runners put your hands. Pandemic or no pandemic, it's true. I would like you to keep your hands away from anything that it's true might go into my mouth. I have to. I have to tell <laughs> another story. I, I did an Ironman one time, and an Ironman, and I think they've probably done away with this. It was back in 2012, and they give sponges no, out. I've, I've, I'm not thinking where this is going. You know where I this haven't is heard going. this story before, but I know but where this is going. I, I feel like everybody who has done an Ironman has had the same experience because they give these sponges out, and you're like, "Oh, cool water!" I put it over my my head, and I wipe my face with the sponge. I wipe my arm. I wipe my legs. I'm feeling so fresh and great. I give it back to a volunteer, and it goes back in the bucket. And guess what? The guy ten feet behind me gets the yeah. sponge that I just washed my body with. What do you do with it? It just. It just goes back in the oh, bucket. Oh, that's not my story. Oh. So my story And it is, got reused. I is, mean, I thought that was bad enough. No, oh, no. My story, the problem was how it got reused the second time. Oh. <laughs> no, someone didn't drink the water. Yeah. No. To pick up the sponge and then just... No, whoosh, no, no, dang. Squirt it right into their mouth. Okay. We're going to not have any sponges. We're going to have a hands-free thing. The pandemic has made me a little more leery of some of these things. Sure. So, uh, yeah, we're going to keep your hands away from that kind of stuff. Yeah. And- <laughs> so in the drive-through bib pickup, again, that was born out of 
necessity yeah. for COVID and we're keeping it around even though maybe we could get away without it, but it's, but it's a good thing. So yeah, it's so actually not a bad, it's not a no, bad it's thing. A, good system. So, a lot of people like it. Yeah. So it, it actually is going to be great. So just 9am is it, we're going to open that bid pickup and let's talk about those people who are coming for the 5k, the 5k that night. What's our start time? Yeah. 5k starting at 6pm. So that means you need to have your bid picked up and parked by five. Yeah. I'd encourage by five. That doesn't mean get there at five, right? Like if you're getting your right. bib and you're like, I got to get there by five. You're going to probably get in line and we'll, we'll service everyone that gets in line. Sure. Right? Like we'll, we'll make sure everyone gets their bib and gets on course. But if they try to get there right at five, then they're probably going to be in line and, and set back a little bit. And then so, the anxiety of, oh my gosh, I got to get to the start line. Yeah. And then they start getting worried about it and just get there a little early. Do yourself a favor, get there a little early, yeah. but nine to five, we'll do bib pickup. Okay. I'd like everybody running the 5k to be parked by five and then, um, and then we'll still be doing bib pickup. For those who are still in line, but again, I encourage you to get there before five to get your bib. Yeah. So it, it'll, it'll be pretty easy. We'll have a start with that. All of both of our races, the 5k and the half, we're going to have a wave type start. So do you want to talk us through how that's going to work? You're going to get your bib. You're going to have a wave assigned to you on that bib. Yeah. And then we kind of plug that into this table that's in our race guide. Yep. Yeah. So, um, we use the waves as a way to stagger the start and to control group size. So your wave is, was assigned based off of the estimated finish time you gave us when you registered for your race. And if you didn't give us a time, then we randomly assigned you one. So don't take it personal. It's not, we don't think We didn't think you were slow or too fast. It's just, or maybe take, maybe take it as a compliment. Yeah. Okay. Maybe so, we put them in a fast wave and we're just like, look, we have we high have, expectations. We do. Don't let us down. <laughs> oh, so, shoot. Um, so that's how you were assigned a wave. It'll be printed on your bib. Uh, the question we often get is, you know, can I run in a different, I'm injured. I'm going to be slower. Can I run in a slower wave or I'm running with my friend. We yes. travel together. Right. Um, we are like in that. the same car and yeah. yeah. So we don't want to be flipping about it, but we don't police the waves or anything. It's just a way for us to control the start and to stagger it. So if you, if you need to, if you have a compelling reason, um, then you can explain it to Colleen and then she'll say whether that's a good enough reason. Or not. Yeah, that's that's pretty what my job on Friday is talking to people about what wave they want to start no, in. I'm just kidding. Please don't tell us. We, we don't care. We don't. I mean, we care about you, but we don't. Again, we, again we're not going to police it and yeah. we don't need to know. There's nothing on our end that we're going to adjust. No. You're so, not going to get in trouble. It's it's not anything like that. Right. So, but if you don't have a good reason, please stick with your assigned yeah. wave and and run like the schedule dictates. So, um, yeah, so... Wave starts, the 5K is going to start at 6 p.m. on Friday night, and then uh, it'll be a wave start. And so we'll just be starting new groups every five minutes. Okay. So we're going to try and keep groups uh, small, a little down to about 100. So we'll okay. kind of be separating groups into groups of 100. It's going to feel a little more like a rolling start, sort of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's not going to be official starts, countdowns every five minutes. Okay. We'll start at 6 p.m. and then we'll be announcing, you know, now it's time for this wave. Make your way on down. Yeah. We'll start a group. Five minutes later, we'll be inviting the next wave to come down. We'll starting that group, and we'll just kind of keep starting everybody until we get everybody on course right. until about seven. So it'll take us about an hour to start everybody. Okay. Six p.m. to seven p.m. Last call for runners to get out on the course is seven p.m. Okay, and that doesn't mean you can show up at six thirty and expect to get your bib and get out on the course. Right. Not well, going we, to happen. We will not be issuing bibs after five forty-five. Okay. So you need to get your bid before yeah. the official start at six PM, even if you're not running for another 30, yeah. 45 minutes. So don't think that this wave is is building this wave start is building in time for you to to start right. later as far as yeah. that goes. Just stick and to show the up. schedule. Yeah. Stick to that schedule. Uh we can find that schedule on page seven right. for your race guide. So just refer to that and that'll get you going for the five K. I, I said this when we were talking about our Grand Teton when we talked about that for our audio race guide. I love the 5K medals. They are my favorite medals of everything. They're just a miniaturized version of our big ones. Yeah. I love the 5K medal. It's yeah. it's going to be great. And then those of you who are doing the doubles or even the quad, we're just going to keep adding hardware. We're just, just You're going to I hope you brought an empty suitcase. Yeah. And, and maybe home. even a little neck guard because if you're going to have to wear it's going to be a Michael Phelps type of a moment yeah. where you're going to have so many of those things hanging around your neck. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So 5K is going to be Friday night and uh, it just kind of runs you through West Yellowstone. It's a little three mile loop. Yep. And yeah, a little bit through town and then a little bit yeah. through the Forest Service roads through the woods and then back to just a little loop. Yeah. Start and finish is 
in relatively the same spot. Pretty easy. Not a lot of elevation change on nope. it. Um, it's great. We love to see families out there as well. How many people do we have for this 5K? This 5K, uh, we'll probably have about 1,100. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be a big 5K. Yeah, it's going to be a big 5K. So that's, that's great. It's exciting to see all you guys out there for that. Nerding out on data, perfecting the optimal training and nutrition plan, aiming for progression in PRs. Sound like you? Well, Gnarly Nutrition can relate. Featuring a full line of honest sports nutrition products, Gnarly provides the best nutrition possible for all types of mountain athletes. Because they offer great tasting and reputable products, Vacation Races trust Gnarly to be the on-course hydration sponsor. With the low-calorie, high-electrolyte Gnarly Hydrate for shorter races and the calorie, electrolyte, and amino acid-filled Gnarly Fuel 2.0 for longer races. Gnarly is here, taking the bonking out of your big day. Use code vacation 15 during checkout at gonarly.com for 15 percent off so that brings us to saturday morning the grand event our half marathon so parking just right there where bib pickup was again yep. logistics so easy for this one yep just going to park right there and then we've got this wave start that's going to be the same as what we just talked through with our 5k if you go to page three in the race guide, your printed race guide or your emailed race guide, you'll see that little table that's going to tell you when you need to be parked and when your projected start time is. We will be starting our walkers a little bit early. Right. Yeah, we will start walkers at, at 545. So walkers are, that's not an assigned wave or it's not designated anywhere. Uh, we just, you know, you know who you are. If, if, if you want to come and ask me, hey, I'm worried about the cutoff. Yeah. Can I start early? The answer is yes. Then we're talking. Yeah. Then we're talking 545. about 545. That's when you yeah, can be or if there. If you like to take a lot of pictures. Yeah, that's great. Or if you just want to enjoy more minutes yeah. out there on course, then, then yeah. So it's an extra, st- an early start. And then our official start is at 6 a.m. So unlike uh, the 5K the night before, the half marathon, parking for the half marathon is a little staggered. So because of the quantity and again, because of, of guidelines in Gallatin County and recommendations uh, to limit gathering size, our staggered start is going to stretch for about two hours okay. so it will take some time to get everybody started in the morning and so not a, so that not everybody's there w- sitting at in the car same for time. three hours right so yeah. refer so, to this table it's really going to help you out as right. far it's, as it's, when to get there exactly it's for you i i would we always tend to get ahead of schedule when we when we do these mm-hmm. staggered starts um just with no shows or things moving a little quicker than we expect so so get there a little early um earlier than what you're your assigned parking time and, and start time might be. And then just listen for us. We'll be making announcements and, and inviting waves down one wave at a time and, and splitting you into smaller groups and then getting you out on course. And so it'll, so that official start will be at 6 a.m. And then you can see on that schedule on page three, just identify what wave you're in, look up what time you should be parked by, and then look at what time to expect to start your race. And then we'll get you started sometime around there. And the start line's really close to the parking lot, so yes, you you're going. You could just sit in your car. You and could, wait. Yeah, you yeah. easily sit in your car and kind of watch everything happen. It, it's really, like I said, the logistics of this race are great as yeah, far real as easy. really relaxed. Um, we'll have, of course, bathrooms, hot chocolate, coffee in the morning, bananas for you. We'll have all that kind of stuff. You can drop your gear bags off if you if you do want any gear bags, or just leave it in your car because you're coming back to the right, same place. Yeah. Pretty simple that way. Um, There's a few hotels in town. Um, that yeah. are close. You wouldn't even yeah. have to drive and park. You could come from your hotel. Most things in West Yellowstone Most... are less than a mile away. Right. They really are very close. Yeah, there's close. almost any hotel in town that you could you walk to. Walk, if you yeah. To. So we will have some gear drop bags for if, you, if there's something you walk over with that you want to leave um, and pick up when you get back. That's totally fine. But walking's a great option. And then we'll get you out on this course. It it kind of goes out through town and then heads out mm-hmm. into... This is, a, this is a trail run. I mean, I... I yeah, don't know if we can say it in any plainer terms, but it's it's a trail run. It's it's definitely off road. Yeah, people ask a lot if they if they need trail running shoes, and that's always a difficult question for me to answer. It is um, difficult because it's very personal preference. It is preference. It also t- depends on experience. Like I think if you have trail shoes and you run in them, this would be a good course to run in trail shoes. 
But if you don't, I don't know if I would recommend, oh, go buy trail shoes. You're going to need them for this course. Because people know? need to understand what trail shoes do. Trail yeah. shoes generally have a rock plate in them, which is a, a more sturdy sole to just help to protect your feet if there's a really rocky surface that you're on. And they also tend to have more grip. So if you're on a course that might be slick with mud or right. it's slippery with gravel and, and things like that, it tends to give you a little more traction. This is not a course you need more traction on. Right. It's not, technically speaking, difficult, and, and that shoe isn't going to help you with that. Right. It doesn't magically change the trail into asphalt. It doesn't. But if no. you do have trail shoes, then we recommend yeah, it. Yeah. But um, but really, this court, there are a few sections that get a little technical. You, you're running through some ruts. Yes. Sometimes there's some areas where the grass is a little tall. You can't exactly it's quite see, see your footing. Yes, yes. And then there's, uh, and there's that section uh, back there past the river where you're running kind of downhill it's a little it's really rocky. rocky yes we get some people that take spills we've had a few yeah. scraped knees and and gotten some bumps but in it, the banks, i mean but it's, it's a trail run so you you really just have to kind of just watch your footing watch slow your down footing. a little bit yeah. and be aware of and i think what you just said was slow down is people need to understand one you're at higher elevation west mm-hmm. yellowstone six six thousand six hundred and sixty six feet i think it's like six 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 is what their elevation is so you're a little little bit higher than most people live. And so you're going to feel it then. Plus you're on trail. Trail yeah. is just slower. So throw all of those expectations, those preconceived times that you run when you train on asphalt out the window. It's just going to be a little bit different. Um, but that's what also makes it great, too. Yeah. I was going to say that especially there's 21% who this is their first half marathon. Okay. And so it's your first time, too, then you probably yeah. haven't been training on trails. Yeah. And so, again, you know. Whatever time you run is going to be a PR. Absolutely. And can, and can I just do a shout out for trail running? Why Please. run on asphalt when you can run on trail? Amen, sister. Because it is so much kinder to your body. Even with the chances of the rocks and stuff like that, it, it's still. It, it's kinder to my body. And it's also the older I get. And I feel like I'm oh, too absolutely. young to be like, oh, when I was younger. But I, when, I'm, when I run on asphalt, I feel... I'm trying to run like I did when I was right. 18 years old. Right. Right. I'm like, no, I know my body can be faster than right. that. And it can't anymore. <laughs> and, and, but on trails, the, the terrain matter. is always different. Yeah. Like there's everything about it is unique from the last time I ran on a yeah. trail. And so I, I'm just running against myself that day. It's not great. my 18 year old self on a road. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm just kind of enjoying it and yep. taking it for what it is. And I love it. It's, it's so great. And we're going to have pacers out there. Beast pacing yeah. will be out there. So they will be helping out. They'll start in the different waves, depending on what the wave is assigned to as far as finish times. But they'll be out there on the course as well. One thing I think we need to talk about are bears. Everybody wants to talk about bears at Yellowstone. Uh, we've seen a lot of comments about that. So how about you tell us what we do with our aid stations and things like that out on the course. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we'll kind of talk through the bear scenario if people aren't familiar and being in bear country and, and some safety things with that. So. Yeah. So. What do bears like to eat? They like to eat small children. Yeah. And yeah. what else? Um, sometimes slow people. Okay. What did, what did Disney bears like to eat? Um, they used to eat honey. Yeah. So we have honey stinger gels on oh, course. Perfect. Perfect. They're in pots. <laughs> they say honey across them. H-U-N-Y. And the bears don't wear pants. I don't know if you knew that. Only red shirts. Why do they wear the shirt? I have no idea. They get really self-conscious about their nipples. I don't know what it is. It's very uncomfortable to me that they don't wear pants. I really wish they would just pant up. But yeah. okay, bears. Pants on, move on. Pants on, move on. I don't so, think they'd be as angry if they wore pants. So, if you if you were startled without your pants on, would you not be angry? I would be much happier if I didn't have to wear pants. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, so. Joking really, aside. folks. Joking so the, aside. We, we like to make jokes because because everybody gets very worried about bears. And it's not silly to be worried about bears. It's not. I am petrified yeah. of them. Colleen's terrified of bears. Where did you see that bear and you freaked out? It was in Yellowstone. Oh, shoot. Maybe this isn't a good story to share. <laughs> it probably is a good story to share because I was running in the park. I was actually on the road. I, mm. I went on the road because I was afraid of the bears and I was alone. Yeah. Number one, you should never be alone in bear country. That's... But I was like, I'm on the road. There'll be cars going by. It'll be fine. I had my bear spray with me and I'm just running down the road and I only have like one earbud in and I 
got to my turnaround spot. I turn around. I look back, not a hundred feet back to where I just came from. This gigantic black bear comes out from where I just went by and where I'm headed back to. No pants. No pants. I couldn't believe it. There was a pig with him. I didn't know what was going on. How did you know he was a black bear calling? Because his head was very pointy. Mm. He he was he was large. But yeah. he, a black bear, grizzly bears have a hump on their backs. Right. They're a little bit different color. They Their ears are a little different. So it was a black bear. He had a snout on him. And he walked across the road. I froze. I took my phone out and I called my husband. I'm like, I need you to talk to me because there is a bear. And he's right here. He didn't give me a second glance. But I want that bear to think I'm alone. I want him to know that there's I want somebody him to on the know other there's... end that's expecting me to come. And if I don't show if up, I don't he's show up, call they're the going to come looking. Your den is going to be under search. And the thing about that I learned from this experience was number one, I probably ran by that bear and didn't even see him. Mm-hmm. And he knew I was there. He, I had gone by and he was just going to saunter across. It's kind of right. like rattlesnakes. They're all there. I just never see them. Yeah. And it was that experience. He was doing his own thing. He could have cared less about me. Right. I waited. I gave him his space. He crossed the road. I made sure he was gone. I ran very quickly for the next mile until I got past where I was. Yeah. But it it was fine. Yeah. Again, you got to be safe, though. Yeah. I mean, you are in bear country. So Absolutely. Be, bear, be bear aware. Yeah. Um, but that being said, so you on were this in a course, large group. Of, I was alone. Yeah. You're in a, you're in a large group of people yes. all tromping through the forest, making loud noise. Yes. And bears don't want to be anywhere near that. No. And on top of that, we, we permit with the forest service and we work with the forest service yes. and there's, and they're very bear aware. Well, they you know have to realize they know is. where their bears are. Exactly. Yeah. They know where bear activity is. They've, you know, there's been times where, you know, a week before the race, they've said, Hey, there's a moose carcass. In this area, and there's so there's bears, and so that's like a time that you wouldn't want to sneak up on a right. bear, right? Otherwise, they don't care that you're they there. really don't care. And so no. we work with the Forest Service, and then they say, "Oh, it's all clear. Like there's yeah. no activity in the area and stuff." So, um, it yeah, you're well. We also have bear spray. We do have bear spray. We have that's going to be on course stations, right? So our volunteers. Yeah. I mean, if anybody's really vulnerable out there, it's the aid station workers sure. who Just are standing out there waiting for you with guys all to that come. Honey. That I mean. If you had honey stingers and you were a bear and you're like, hey, what you got there? Yeah. Um, bear spray at the aid stations. Runners will often ask if they need to run with it. That's not necessary, I don't think. But some people, they just feel more comfortable personal doing choice. it. And you're totally welcome to do just that. Just know you cannot fly with bear spray. Correct. If you are flying, you're going to have to purchase bear spray. Some places do have rentals of bear mm-hmm. spray because most bear spray doesn't get used. Yeah. And so they and, will rent. And also can. be sure to know how to use bear spray. Again, I don't think you'll need it on the course. It is not a repellent. But if you're in the area and if you're hiking and you have it with you. Right. It's not like bug spray. You do not spray it on yourself. Please. You will end up in the hospital. Yeah. Don't it's, spray it on yourself. It's like a pepper spray bomb. That's all and it that's is. That's how it works. And yep. so just make sure you read the instructions. And but really, it, the purpose of bear spray is to make bears not like humans. That their interaction with the human is negative. Right. So, because in Yellowstone, back in the 1950s, have you seen... Oh, um, yeah. I forget what the... There was a Disney movie about the three bears in Yellowstone. Mm. Shoot. It's my husband's favorite favorite movie, and I can't remember the name. I haven't seen And it. they were feeding the bears marshmallows. And yeah. The bears I mean, were, you see pictures of that oh, from the 50s and 60s. Yeah. People driving, you know, the card trip, yep. road trip USA. And, uh, yeah, they're just there, and the bears are up just... Licking food out of people's hands right out yes. of the windows. and That caused problems, as anyone can imagine, for yeah. the bears and for the people. And so they, the bear spray, the purpose of the bear spray is that their interaction with you is negative, right. which means I see the next human and I want nothing to do with them because they pepper sprayed my face. So don't pepper spray yourself. It's not a repellent. Yeah. So that's it. if you want to carry bear spray, carry bear spray. There will be some out on the course. Our sweepers will have bear spray with them. Um, yeah, I feel like we're talking a lot about Bears, which has the opposite effect of what we're intending, which is you don't need to worry about it. Please don't I be know, scared. And I we're know. talking so much about it. But they're just really great stories. And you know the, what? I hope you see some bears when you go to Yellowstone. It's amazing to see bears. They're yeah. amazing. They're amazing creatures. We saw a grizzly mama with like three cubs yeah. one time. And if you want to see them in a controlled environment, Grizzly oh, Wolf yes. Discovery Center in it's West amazing. Yellowstone. It's like a rehabilitation center for for bears and, and wolves. And, and they so actually they, test like coolers and things like that to see if they're yeah. bear proof there. 
It's it. The Discovery Center is a great place. My kids loved yeah, it. Yeah, it's a cool spot. And sometimes you can hear the wolves howling at night. We stayed at the Wyndham. I think Ooh. it's a Wyndham right across the street from there. Yeah. And you could hear the wolves howl at night. That's cool. It was very cool. So, all right, bears, you're going to be fine. You'll be fine. You don't need to wear with, bells head to toe. Right, but you're welcome to. Some people sure. do. Whatever makes you comfortable. It's great. Yep. Like that's that's totally fine. Be noisy. Not necessary. Be noisy. Be big. You're going to be great. Yep. It's going to be good. And we're going to take good care of you out there. So trail course, well marked. If On the, our courses, we mark with pink flagging tape out mm-hmm. on our trail sections. So you're going to see our blue vacation races flags as well as pink flagging tape out there. Um, it's going to be very, very well marked. Don't worry about that. Um, but aid stations, six aid stations, you're going to have everything you need. Pacers will be out there. 2,600 runners. Speaking of aid stations. Yeah. So... um so water, gnarly electrolyte drink, honey stinger energy gels, yep. toilets at all yep. of them. Seven and nine mm-hmm. are a little more remote. Yes. They're difficult for us to access. And so if you, there's still plenty of support there. But if you're carrying like a, a water you got a pack, pack on. or something yeah. that carries a lot of water, stop at five and fill to up. To refill. Right. So, that not, so that you're not refilling back at seven or nine where it's a little harder for us to access yeah. and refill if we need to. So Because we can only bring so much out at a time right. out there. So. so it'll be well supported, but just try to plan ahead a little bit if you yeah. can. And also uh, toilets at seven and nine. We will have toilets, but they're going to be composting, composting toilets. toilets. Okay. So they'll be like little uh, tents. tents, like those changing tents Yep. and yep. composting toilets in there. So there will be toilets, but they just won't be big old porta potties like uh, right at the other aid a traditional porta potty mm-hmm. like yeah actually the composting toilets are great they're great they really really are and if you've been to some of our other events you've probably run into a, some iteration of the composting toilet but these are kind of our travel toilets i'm gonna call them a travel right. toilet there you go there are travel toilets so so yeah you're gonna have great support out there um it, it can be a little hilly there there is definitely some elevation gain um it's i'm not gonna say it's not a challenging course it's a challenging course very tough yeah, it's a challenging course, but slow down. Enjoy it. It's beautiful. The forest is beautiful yep, there. That run along the river. Yeah, it really is. It's yeah. it's a it's a great place. Keep an eye out for a beaver dam. There's oh, been beaver dams in that river. There right are there, beaver right? dams yeah. in that river. And beavers, amazing. Yeah. They are absolutely incredible. We're also going to have our RaceJoy app that's going to be working as a tracking device. Yep. So you can s- download the RaceJoy app. You can start it when you start your race. And then your spectators can actually track your progress out on the course. And also we have a little, we upload some messages. I create a bunch of messaging about Yellowstone, about the course and some fun facts that those will go off. If you're wearing your headphones, you'll hear that kind of a little audio tour guide as you go with race joy as well. And speaking of race joy, let's talk about spectators at this event. COVID-19, not spectator friendly. Right. And again, that's one of those things that has fluctuated a little bit. Uh, by location and Gallatin County especially is, is still um, pretty it, sensitive, pretty that. sensitive and really uh, strongly pushing for, to avoid large gatherings, yeah. which when they, when they make uh, concessions for large outdoor events like ours, one of the stipulations is that there's, there's not large gatherings from spectators. Those not who aren't active participants. So okay. unfortunately at this event we have we are discouraging spectators from being at the finish line. So they can use the race joy to kind of track your progress on that. So we encourage you to use that and we love your spectators. We do. We really, really do. We'd like to have them there, but it's just one of those things. Yeah. And we would we're just excited to have a race. We'll make up for it. We'll have a great finish line. We'll have great yeah. volunteers. And- we'll be there cheering for you. We'll yeah. be your spectators. It will be good. It it'll will be great. Be, it'll be it'll be good. Don't worry about that. All right, Dane. I'm trying to think through. We've gotten through this challenging course. We've seen this beautiful forest out there. We were bear aware. Everything was great. We've got big smiles. We've got people who are earning their grand quad medals at the end of this because they've run with us in Teton and at Yellowstone. So speaking of which, um, if they participated in one of the doubles or the grand quad, yes. Uh, at the finish of the half marathon is when they'll receive their those medals, those extra medals, okay. and um, and they'll also receive one bib. So if they're doing the Grand Quad or the Grizzly Double, right. they'll have gotten their bib at Grand Teton, and they'll use that bib for every race that they participate in. Same bib. Okay. If they lose it, we can reassign them a new bib. Yeah. Um, but we ask them to hold on to it and yeah. and use the same bib. And then uh, at the end of the Yellowstone half marathon, they'll get all their 
their extra double medals and everything. And for all of those, they get extra swag items also. Like a, they picked it at, when they registered. Okay. So a beach hoodie or an extra t-shirt and those or a pint will glass, all be at hat, packet things like that. Up. Those will all be at packet pickup. And then okay. at the finish line at, of the Yellowstone half. Um, if they need to exchange anything or we can do all buy that. extras or okay. anything like that, that'll cool. all be available for them. Great. Merchandise will be at the finish line. Yeah, I was line. just going to say merchandise. Yeah. We'll have race merchandise available. So. Yeah, Megan's got really great stuff. Yeah. Both Teton and Yellowstone stuff. And um, again, beach hoodies, hats. The vacation uh, races gooders that we've got this year. Yeah, our custom gooders. Custom gooders this year. They're yep. awesome. So pick up a pair of those. They're blue. They get the little VR logo on them. Yeah, so. some Parks Project. Uh, t-shirts, sweatshirts, yeah. and things like that. Some good stuff. So we'll have race merchandise out there. Dane, tell me, West Yellowstone, you're staying there. Mm. What's your what's your go-to things around West Yellowstone as far as eating? Oh, man. So Starts with a T. I've got... Ends with a bus. Oh, yeah, baby. But I but it's not that big. It's and if not I tell that big. all of our runners... I know. And there's two of them, but you got to go to the one on the main drag. <sighs> yeah, it's the taco bus, man. I know and the taco bus. Is it's the, the best. taco bus, and and I'll tell you. I'm gonna let you guys in on another little secret. All right. The jalapeno wontons mm. at the slippery otter. That sauce with the huckleberry sauce. You know, we called so them good. and asked them like if they could ship them to us or whatever. Like, no, we make them fresh every day. Oh, like they roll them fresh every day. So it's these little jalapeno wontons like, poppers, yeah. yeah, and this huckleberry sauce. Oh. It is so good. So one year we went, it was my wife and Sherry's and June's, Lyle's wife's birthdays. Yeah. Okay. So we all celebrated right. the birthdays. All the staff and team were all there. Yep. Birthday at Slippery Otter. My wife and I were sitting at the table with our kids and Salem and Megan's kids. So we're at the kid table. Okay. And like we just, and they just kept ordering wontons. Orders these wontons for all the tables. Yeah. Like by the time everyone's meal got there, we were so full. <laughs> but everybody was sharing those plates. Except my wife and I were at the table, and the kids didn't like any of them. Oh. And so we ate, like, way too six many. plates of, <laughs> just between the two of us, just these jalapeno ones. Oh, they're, and they're not too spicy. They're, like, no, perfect. perfect. And the huckleberry, like, the sweet of it. Mm -hmm. mm. It's good stuff. Yeah. And there's huckleberry everything in Montana. Yeah, the huckleberry ice cream at it's the City Creamery. It's so good. It's delicious. Go to the taco bus, mm -hmm. have a plate. And then get a... Scoop of ice cream. Get, just, go to the cone. Get the, yeah. It's homemade. The cream. Right there. Uh, it's so good. There there really is some great food to eat yeah. in West Yellowstone. There's uh, like the Three Bears. The Three Bears has the best good breakfast. breakfast. Yeah. It's busy. It is busy. It is very busy. West Yellowstone is, is busy. Yes, it's very busy. We try and do our race early in the season, but it's it's really, you know, June to yeah. September is just the crazy and West Yellowstone they pack. don't have a lot of international travelers because of yeah. COVID-19, which is nice, but... But domestic tourism at, is Yeah, up. it's People huge. People are traveling, yeah. I mean, Zion National Park had their biggest numbers ever in 2020. If oh, you, yeah. If you can believe that. People had nowhere to go but outside. Right. So people are still visiting. There's a lot of places, but... The Three Bears is good. It is tiny. Mm -hmm. They have a great breakfast. If you like, I call it just a cafe breakfast. You want yeah. great pancakes, huckleberry syrup, some eggs, a good price. Three Bears is the place to go. Yeah. So it's it's really good. West Yellowstone. We like to get uh, ice cream at the Old Faithful spot, too. There's the Old Faithful Inn. Yes, we get food, that there. And they got ice cream there, just like the soft serve. It's well, good, too. And you got to check the Old Faithful Inn out because that's just a historic building in yeah. and of itself. It's the, isn't it the oldest building in I the park? I believe it has to be because it is, if you go into the bathrooms there, like the stalls are so short, it comes to like the middle of my chest. I, I'm about 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 yeah. and it is so awkward to go to the bathroom at the Old Faithful Inn because I'm like, wow, this was made for people a very long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> so it is very cool. It's all wood inside. Yep. And uh, you can actually take tours if if they're doing that. I don't know for sure with mm. COVID if they're doing that. But it's right there at the Geyser Basin. And yeah, definitely go check out the Old Faithful Inn. And they have great huckleberry ice cream there as well. Oh, do they? I've never gotten it there. Oh, yes, they do. Yep, mm. they have it there. They have the... Um, the cafeteria that's just over in the other building. But yes, in the Old Faithful Inn, there is ice cream there as well. You can get huckleberry ice cream everywhere. Yeah, pretty much everywhere in Montana. Yeah, it's something about those huckleberries. I bet you the bears like them too. Yeah. You think the bears would eat huckleberries? Probably. I'm sure they do. I'm, yep. sh I'm sure. Those and moss. Honestly, grizzly bears, do you know what they eat? Moss. Yeah, how do they get so big? 
they eat tons of moss, which I find just fascinating. They dig with their claws. These moss are in the ground and they eat these moss. It's true. Go look it up. It's true. They don't just eat people. They don't eat people at all, okay? They're opportunistic, but they do eat a lot of moss. It's That's what their diet is basically made of. I learned that in Glacier. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So don't fear the bear. Just be aware. Can we put that in the race guide next year? Yeah. Did you just think of that? I did. Don't Somebody fear the bear. Just be aware that I'm coining it right now. If yeah. you're listening to this podcast, you just heard me say this original saying. It is now a vacation races thing. Don't fear the bear. Be aware. May 20th. May 20th, 2021. 2021. Colleen Rue. Southern Utah. Here we are. That's when I've said it. All right. It's going down. Anything else, Dane, that you can think about this half marathon? I feel like we've covered quite a bit of it. Yeah, it's a really straightforward one. The logistics, there's not a lot of questions. And so hopefully everybody just comes and has a good time. Um, enjoys their trip 58 again, 58% first time visiting Yellowstone. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of people that have never been to Yellowstone. First time to Yellowstone. What do you got to do? Oh, you've got to see grand prismatic. Here's the thing about Yellowstone. The things that you've got to do are the things everybody's doing. Unfortunately, but I was going to say grand prismatic. Yeah. Okay. This spring it's, it's a beautiful hot spring. Don't go to the regular boardwalks. No, go to the boardwalks. I think it's worth going to the boardwalks. You can't see it from there. Yeah. There's I, another hike. You right. know what I'm talking about? I think about. you do both. Okay. All right. I'll give you both. But if you only could do one, I re- I agree. I think you do the one that you're just about to. You got to you got to do like a about a mile hike in. Yeah. And you get it's oh, towards Ferry Falls. So just right. just past Grand Bit Prismatic Parking. Yep. There's another parking lot for the Ferry Falls yep. Trailhead, and it's you walk like on that three quarters trail. of a mile. Yeah. You walk that trail. You see the Grand Prismatic Boardwalk mm-hmm. in the distance, and then after a little while, it all of a sudden just juts up. Yep. into the woods and you you climb for just a little bit and then it yeah, opens up to a, a lookout and you get because springs hot springs are hard to see when you're at the same level as the hot spring and grand prismatic especially is, is just enormous beautiful. and it's enormous and it's this, you got the vivid colors it changes yes. colors all throughout so you really got to see it from up high to because i feel like when i'm on the it. boardwalk at grand prismatic i am in the steam Mm-hmm. You get in the steam of the hot springs and it's harder to see. So I do like that little overlook. I do too. Can I tell you about maybe a secret one that we found just past on this same side, um, on the old faithful side of things. We went out to a geyser that was called Lone Star Geyser. We had our bikes with us and you could walk out there or you could bike. It's about two miles. I think it was like four miles round trip. It's this huge geyser. That's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. It starts at a really small parking lot. Mm -hmm. You've got to get out there. And the geyser goes off about every 45 minutes to every 90 minutes. So it's It's the same as old. Yeah, it's fairly consistent. It has a huge explosion of about 30 feet. And it's pretty cool. Cool. So Lone Star Geyser. Yeah. It's off the beaten path. And if you have bikes, you can ride your bikes into it. You got to be careful at Yellowstone because those the thermal features are are dangerous. Very so much so. There's boardwalks and there's kind of this feeling of like, oh, we're just walking the same place everybody else is. And like, right. you don't get to get out and adventure. Right. It's a dangerous place to get out and adventure. Very much. So stay on the boardwalks. Yeah. Do not mess around with the thermal features. Don't throw no. things in them. Don't no. walk in them. People die. All the time. Yeah. They, I mean, they, they fall in them and they die. Like those yeah. things are hot. And there's nothing left. There, like, no. They no. disintegrate. Yeah. It, it really is a dangerous place. If you have kids... You've really got to educate your kids there. Yeah. You can't touch this them. water. I mean, this water is hot. Mm-hmm. Um, it's there's acids. There's things in the water. It's it's not. <laughs> yeah. So so respect this, the space that you're in, obviously. Um, but there are hidden gems like Lone yeah. Star Basin. Like and you just got to put in some distance. So make sure you just know where you're going. Don't just go traipsing through the, through yeah. the woods. Right. But um, but look for those. Look for those off yeah. the beaten path like. Little lesser known, lesser visited. Spots. This this was a great thing. We got out there. There was maybe three other people out there, and we saw a bear on the way back. So it was kind of yeah. cool. It was a little bit frightening because we were in a group of people. There was quite a large group of people all walking back, and they were stopped. And I didn't know why they were stopped. We couldn't see why they were stopped. And then we stopped, and I realized my daughter was within twenty feet of Ooh. this bear. It was a little bear, and he had a fish. He had just come from the water, and oh, he had a fish in his cool. mouth, and he had kind of gone up this hillside. And I'm like, Sydney, I need you to back up, come towards mommy. <laughs> I was like, and you know, she 
we were safe. There was a lot of people around. The bear was just trying to get away from us, but it was like a little juvenile grizzly yeah. with a fish in his mouth. And it was wow. so cool. It was so cool to see. Yeah, that's a cool experience. Yeah, it really was. So Yellowstone, that we've had lots of cool experiences. Yeah. We've we saw nine bear in one trip from our car. Yeah. So um yeah, tons of wildlife. Yeah. Don't just stop in the middle of the road though, about, right? Like yeah, people yeah, just please stop. don't stop in the middle of the road. You'll yeah. make so many people Pull off, be safe. And, and the, the first animals. time you see a bison, it's gonna be amazing. Don't but don't stop. Don't stop. Just keep going. There's plenty You're more of them. See more. Yeah. There's plenty more. You're going to be so tired of bison by the time you get out of there. Yeah. Don't stop for this first one and don't get close to them. They look docile. They are not. They are not. So be Did careful. Did you see that video mm. of like hundreds of bison pouring off of this hill onto the road and running? No. Like it, a stampede? Yes. And oh it went gosh. on for a long time. It was a lot of bison. Wow. And this person was just filming from their car because all the cars were stopped. because and they, they got That's amazing. Go. Yeah. The bison do get in the road and they could All care the less that they are in the road. Yep. And as long and they as they travel in big herds. And, and so, if they're there, you're not going around them. The rangers will not let you around them yeah. because it's unsafe. But, you know, they don't want a bison to get hit by a car and yeah, things like course. that. Plus, they're going to ruin your car. Yeah. Let's but just, it is, yeah. it's magnificent. They, it, it really is. And you're going to see, especially if you're coming in from West Yellowstone, right along. Uh, that's Madison River, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's Madison River tons of bison along that area so yeah. lots of them so it's it's good there's so much we have seen cubs we've seen elk up by mammoth yeah. there's elk all over the place little up grand there. canyon the yellowstone's another very popular spot but also a must see grand canyon for sure i think that the uncle uncle uh, tom's uncle trail, tom's trail I, was gonna, the I was just gonna say uncle tom's trail is a short it, it because of the elevation you're at, you're probably going to feel it, but you kind of climb down these stairs and then you got to climb back out. But it's, it's what, 200 stairs or something. It's not yeah. that far, um, but it is definitely worth it because you get close to the falls. Yeah. So good stuff. They're big waterfalls. I love seeing the waterfalls. Yeah. But again, plan your trip. Otherwise, you can spend a lot of time just, yeah. just driving. It, so it, know what you want to see. And know be, where you want to go. And I think that's a good thing too. plan to drive. Have snacks in the yes. car. Um, have something. If you've got kids with you, something to keep them entertained. Uh, because it is, there's a lot of driving in Yellowstone. There's less hiking, like Grand Teton, you go to Grand Teton, it's all hiking. You're hiking in, you're in the mountains all the time. Yellowstone is a driving park. I call it the driving national park. It's also so massive. I know there's, there's tons of amazing hikes. Osprey Falls is a great hike. Uh, Washburn. Washburn's closed. closed. Yeah. Yeah. But um, and there's so so much backcountry to explore. There's a thousand miles of backcountry. Yeah. But for... For a weekend, yeah, you know, our You're runners who are there. just trying to get in and get the most bang for yeah. their buck. It's going to be a lot of driving to locations, getting out, doing short hikes. Yeah, you're so. gonna you're gonna be over at the Old Faithful Geyser Basin. You're gonna be over at the Norris Geyser Basin. Those yeah. kind of things to see those those really iconic things. Uh, Fountain Geyser is one of our favorites. You go by that on oh, the way yeah. to get to Old Faithful. So yeah, there's there's a lot to see. There, there really is. Yeah. is. You won't a be lot able to see. see it all. It's like unlike some parks where you're there for 48 hours and you're like, yeah, I feel like you know we saw yeah. a lot of it. You're you're gonna barely scratch the surface. You of really will. That's why you got to keep going back to Yellowstone, and then then we could talk about the Yellowstone Lake side of things. There is oh, a yeah. whole nother area. We actually drove in from Wyoming. Um, is that the east entrance? We drove in from the east yeah, entrance. I've been over the lake. I've never been in the east entrance. The north entrance, though, is the Teddy Roosevelt Arch. Yes, which is historical. They and are very doing cool. a bunch of construction up there on that north end, so be oh, yeah. aware that north entrance is under construction. So I don't know; it's probably not closed, but there is a lot of construction up that area. But very historic up that area in the Mammoth area on the yeah. north side. So Yellowstone's going to be great. We could talk about this for I know. days. We, we talked about the race about twenty five percent of the time. I feel and then like just it. all kinds of other stuff seventy five percent of the time. So hopefully, but you guys are hopefully ready. we kept runners entertained on the car drive, and it's been useful i know it's it's going to be great you guys are going to have a great time if you have any questions dane what's your email so they can reach out to you it's uh, my first name dane which is spelled d-e-h-n at vacationraces.com or lyle are you guys buddy directing yeah, this one yeah, as we're well doing this one together so, <laughs> so lyle l-y-l-e at vacationraces.com so if you've got any concerns or, or questions or anything like that just just shoot us an email yeah and we'll get you all taken care of and we're just excited to have you guys out there it's going to be a great weekend and no worries about anything. If you have any worries, come and talk to us and we'll take care of them. Yeah, we'll and take care of you. That's what Vacation Races does. We're just glad that you chose to run with us. 
And our Vacation Races family is really special to us. And you are a part of that family. If you, this is your first time with Vacation Races, we don't, we welcome you, but we also encourage you to go listen to our Welcome and Orientation podcast that we have. It goes a little bit deeper into how Vacation Races is a little bit different. We have some different things like our Zero Waste Initiative and being cup free and stuff like that, that we don't get into on these race guides. We like to talk about the park and we like to talk about the course and fun things like that. But if you want some more nuts and bolts about vacation races, check out that podcast as well. And that will help you out. And uh, yeah, we're just excited to spend the weekend with you up in West Yellowstone. You've been listening to the Vacation Races and Friends podcast. We'd love your feedback. Email podcast at vacationraces.com with comments, concerns, or stories you'd love to share. Make sure to watch for more episodes coming soon to vacationraces.com. This episode was produced by Colleen Rue in the Festival Sound Studio. For information about music licensing, contact Dane at vacationraces.com. <laughs>